The Great Search, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit, and this week's Great Search is... Electrolytic Capacitors. Everything you need to know that I can cover in about 10 minutes. Okay, so let's, uh, over here I've got this design I'm working on, an Eagle CAD. It's got a big chunky power supply, and it's got these two capacitors. Um, let me just zoom into the power supply so you can see where they live. So one of these capacitors is uh, 47 microfarad, 25 volts, and it sits before the 5 volt regulator. Uh, it's, there's a little bit of power protection circuitry on off switch. And here is the 24 microfarad input, and it's in parallel with a uh, 0.1 microfarad. And then over here, there's actually another 10 microfarad over here to the right. But this is the output. Uh, it's at least 47 microfarad, you see, I see, uh, point, sorry, 47 microfarad plus. And because it's a five volt output, I need at least 6.3 volts uh, of a, a voltage uh, rating for the capacitor. And then I thought I'd show on um, the overhead real fast what these look like. Um, okay, so what is an electrolytic capacitor compared to your kind of standard issue uh, ceramic capacitor? Because you're gonna see uh, both in many designs. So this uh, is an electrolytic capacitor. It's a metallic uh, metal tin. Uh, there's a marking uh, showing uh, which one's the negative side. If you're using through-hole electronics, they look like this. You know, they come in various sizes. This one's a uh, 22, sorry, 220 microfarad, and this is a one microfarad. So, you know, you're going to find them. It's usually 0.5, like 0.47. Of, yeah, I've never really seen anything below maybe 0 0.22, 0 0.47 microfarad, and they'll go up to, like, farad. You can get super capacitors. So many thousands of microfarad, easily millifarad, up to like one farad if you get a super cap, very big. Um, they're large. They, they don't come super small. I mean, these are fairly small electrolytic cap capacitors, but, you know, a lot of them are going to be fairly chunky. Um, they actually are, are wound pieces of foil inside that create the capacitance. Um, and, you know, if you compare this board, which has two, to a board like this, which has none, right? This has no electrolytic capacitors at all. It has ceramic capacitors. So why, why do you want electrolytic on this? Well, first off, if you have the space, um, electrolytic capacitors for, you know, uh, cost per capacitance, you're going to get a much better deal. Like, you know, a, a, a 10 microfarad ceramic capacitor was gonna cost you maybe 10 cents. Um, for that same price, you can get something that is, um, you know, 200 or 470 microfarads uh, is electrolytic capacitor. So you're going to get much more capacitance. Second, um, if you do need a lot of capacitance for your circuit because you have a big power supply with a lot of, you know, a, a lot of current draw and inconsistent current draw that you have to protect against, with ceramic capacitors, they don't, like, you can get 100 microfarad, but you don't really see them higher than that. Ceramics, you can see them as little as 1.2 picofarad, right? They'll get as small as possible um, in the picofarads and up to, you know, 10, 22, 47, and maybe 100 microfarad. You, you can get that high, but they start getting expensive and they start not being as effective. Uh, ceramic capacitors are highly affected by um, the DC voltage across them. Um, they're very small. They're great at high frequency uh, work uh, in use cases because um, they have a low ESR but when you have a big power supply like on this board where I'm going to be like drawing a ton of current like up to an amp and it's going to be driving servos and whatever instead of having you know four 10 microfarad capacitors in a row which I could have instead I pick one large electrolytic it's partially a cost thing but also you know this one is a hundred microfarad uh, six volt capacitor again, you know it, it to, to make that with ceramic capacitors You either have to pay a lot more um, Or you end up having a lot of capacitors in a row uh, and these work wonderfully um, and they're they're durable and I like them so You know, they don't replace ceramics electrolytics have a have a big place If you're making very petite electronics chances are you're not going to use uh, electrolytic capacitors but when size isn't an issue and uh, you want to reduce costs you're going to definitely go for electrolytics. So that's that's your like two minute briefer.
of, of when you want them. Um, okay, so let's go to uh, digikey.com and we can, that's the, the capacitor. So, uh, you know, again, there's, there's, there's more than like three basic, electro, uh, basic capacitors, but there's kind of basically three. There's the ceramic, I mentioned, really good for high frequency. 10 microfarad-ish or less is what they are best at. Electrolytic, uh, big, inexpensive bulk capacitance. Um, pair them with a the ceramic and you know you got the high frequency and the low frequency uh, matched up. And there's ten, uh, tantalum or tantalum. Um, a lot of folks will use tantalum because they're very nice uh, in between. You can get very high capacitance, 220, 470 microfarads easily, um, high voltage uh, rate, uh, rating. Um, however, uh, I found that they're more delicate. It's a lot easier to pop them. Um, electrolytics, ceramics are nonpolar. Uh, electrolytics are polar, but they can kind of put up with it a little bit. Uh, Tensilins will just pop instantly the, the moment you abuse them. Uh, so watch out for that. Uh, and second, uh, you want to make sure that your tantalum is being ethically sourced. Um, if you're getting electrolytics or ceramics, you don't have to, to worry about that as much. So let's uh, look for electrolytic capacitor. And, you know, there's going to be thousands. That's one of the nice things about electrolytics is they're so generic. You're going to be able to have tons of options. Like, you, you never have to really worry about, like, am I going to be able to find an electrolytic capacitor in stock? Don't worry, you will. It's like a resistor. It's like they're, these are plentifully made. Um, so that said, uh, here you go. There's, uh, you can see there's, you know, two uh, areas. There's uh, tantalum and there's uh, aluminum electrolytic. And we're going to go to aluminum electrolytic. No, you know, there's about 100,000 of each. Okay, so under electrolytic uh, capacitors, again, there are a lot of options. And... Um, you're going to want to very quickly narrow down because even when you get to like the one of the most, you know, you really narrow down, you're still going to have like a hundred options. Um, so just be aware of that. It's not going to be like some searches where we're like, let's craft the perfect search and then one item pops out. With capacitors, you're going to have a lot of options no matter what. So look at what's in stock, what's available, you know, what, what you care about. Um, but you'll have a lot of options available. So let's, um, let's first look for only active. Um, we don't always see this, but uh, on capacitance, because oftentimes folks are looking for a range of capacitance, uh, instead of like shift clicking, you can uh, have a minimum and a max. So let's say I want uh, 47 to 100 microfarads. And I believe, yeah, so that automatically updated to about 11,000 options. That's kind of nice. Tolerance. Um, you know, it depends on how much you, you care about this. Uh, for some audio use cases, you know, you might want a tighter tolerance. For bulk uh, capacitance for a power supply, you know, what's nice is that the, the tolerance basically is just like how much they bin them, right? So you'll rarely get less than 10 or 20% um, negative, but positive it could be over, right? Which is something you have to think about. Like, usually when you have a bulk capacitor for your power supply, you don't care if it's twice as much, you're like bonus, like free. Like it's kind of when you open up like your drink and it's like filled up all the way to the top and you're like, nice, so it's like an extra sip in it. You don't care as long as it isn't like halfway full. Um, same thing with capacitors. Uh, electrolytic especially, it, they're, they'll do, they mass make these and they're like, as long as it's not less than 47 microfarads, it goes in the bin. Um, okay, so there's also uh, one thing to watch for is there's you know through hole or plug type and um, their surface mount. So uh, chassis mount and surface mount. So through hole, just to show you real fast, uh, you know, is your standard, you can get axial this way. These are kind of nice. Uh, they sit nice and flat on the PCB. Um, and then this is of course like your common everyday electrolytic capacitor. Um, you know, through hole electrolytic capacitors are great. I have a, a bin of them. I do recommend picking up a bunch if you don't already have some because they're always useful for like stabilizing power supplies and, and NeoPixel LEDs. You know, you add a big capacitor, nice, uh, nicely smooths out the power supply for you. Um, that said, I'm going to undo the mounting type because I actually want surface mount. Sorry. Okay. 
So surface mount, and then now it's like, okay, there's a couple different, there's like a lot of different like settings that you might not care about. But the one thing you'll definitely want to look at is the voltage rating. Um, electrolytic capacitors work best when you give them at least 20, 25% of headroom above the expected voltage you're using. So if you have a five volt power supply, um, you'll want it to be uh, rated for uh, 6.3 volts. And you'll notice like the voltage ratings are like, they're like, oh, they are more than common rail voltages. So if you have a 3.3 volt rail, pick four volts. Five volt rail, 6.3 volts. Seven or eight volts, you know, 10. 16 is 12 and above. 20, 25, you know, you basically just pick the next one up and give yourself a little headroom. Um, for this uh, power supply, uh, 12 volts in is the maximum DC input, so let's pick six volt rating. Um, you can always go higher, right? So if you can't find the capacitor you want, the size you want, at 16 volts, just bump it up to, you can always get 20, 20, 25, but I, I'm not worried about getting the right uh, capacitor, so I'm just gonna pick 16 volts. Okay, um, so next up, you see the tolerance kind of now, you only have two options for tolerance, that's great. Polarization is bipolar or polar. Uh, bipolar means that it can be, um, current can go either way. Uh, the, sorry, the voltage, the bias voltage across can be either way. Um, current, of course, can go back and forth depending, as long as the, for unipolar, as long as ground is, is lower than the power rail, the positive rail. Bipolar, it doesn't matter. They're actually designed so they can go either way. Those tend to be used for audio. Um, I don't really see them anywhere else, to be honest, um, but for audio DC uh, blocking capacitors. Um, that said, uh, you will pay more for them, uh, and they're pretty rare, so I'm just going to get rid of that option. Okay, and then um, size and dimensions. So all capacitors come in very standardized sizes, which is really great. Uh, so let's go to the overhead real fast and I can measure this. It's two use. So uh, for this capacitor, I measure it. Uh, this is five point, sorry, five point two ish millimeters. Uh, this one is also five point two. Um, but if you look, they're a little bit smaller than the uh, outline. Um, when you're buying electrolytic caps, the you'll pay less if they're bigger. You'll pay less uh, if they're wider. You'll pay less if the voltage is lower. And you'll pay less for a lower capacitance. So more capacitance, you'll pay more. Higher voltage rating, you'll pay more. Smaller size, you'll pay more. So all things considered, you know, if you're if you're concerned about cost, you might as well just go with the biggest one you can um, fit on your PCB. Okay, so you can go back to the uh, computer. So I'm going to pick uh, 6.3 millimeters, which is the size. Heat, uh, seated height, you know, this may matter to you. In, this, in my case, I don't really care too much. Um, the seated height is not that important, but you'll see the majority of them are, they're not all the same. The diameter is more uh, uh, standardized than the height. Um, and then you know, now you still have quite a couple hundred of them. So like, what, what are you gonna use to differentiate? Well, you're gonna pay more for um, lower ripple current. So the ripple current is, is, you know, basically tells you how much, how good is it at um, keeping them from being variations in current and voltage. So you'll get lower noise, basically. There's a shortcut. Impedance, ditto. Um, high impedance, cheaper. So here, like four ohms. Uh, lower impedance, you're going to get uh, less ripple. Um, ceramic uh, capacitors in exchange, it, it, as a comparison, have much, much lower um, uh, impedance. I think this is the same as, oh, no, sorry, it's not the same as the ESR. Sorry, I'm mistaken. Uh, although I don't know what the impedance is compared to the ESR. So the ESR, sorry, the uh, equivalent series resistance, um, the lower it is, um, the less ripple, and usually the more stable your power supply is. Um, ceramic capacitors have much, much lower ESR. I have seen some power supply chips that require high ESR uh, for stability um, for, for their feedback loop. Um, I only saw it once, but like it actually made a difference. The power supply chip said, do not use only ceramic capacitors on the output. You have to have at least one 
electrolytic capacitor. Um, so you'll pay more for lower ESR again. Um, they're almost all rated at about 120 hertz, but I guess some are rated at 100 kilohertz. Um, for again, for me, it doesn't matter so much. There's also lifetime temperature. Um, again, this is whether you are using, you want something high reliability at high temperature. Electrolytics, as people who do power supply work know, they can die if they are used for a very, very long time or they're poorly made or it's very hot. So all these things are, are reliability. Um, I'm just gonna go for general purpose. And then I'm actually going to like check just for the ones in stock. So that's 59. And then there's still a lot of options. And then this is where I actually like do my little shortcut. I just filter by, uh, Yeah, I filter uh, going down by uh, quantity because uh, at this point I'm like, there's too many options. I don't know what to pick. You can do it by price, but it's tough because again, there's so many variables of what you're paying for. Um, you know, comparatively for the lowest like current ripple, the lowest ESR, lowest size. So I kind of just go with like whatever's popular. And um, so in the end, I actually thought, okay, this 47 microfarad, 16 volt. Plus or minus 20% looked pretty good. Um, you know, the lifetime temperature, I don't really care. It's polar, I know that. Um, the ripple current was not too high, 58 um, milliamps. And the ESR is, hold on. Oh, the ESR is not rated here. You have to look at the data sheet. So, um, I will say checking out the data sheet is, is going to be very helpful. Uh, first off, because they have like all the dimensional data and they'll also tell you all of the different, um, if you like the capacitor you have, but you want to get one with like smaller diameter or you want to get one with a little bit more uh, capacitance or a better tolerance, you can use the, the numbering system to um, figure out like how to like calculate what the part number would be that you want. Let me see. Okay, so it's got the ripple current is here. Let's see if they have the ESR. I think they don't. I think they're just general purpose and they're like, we don't really rate them. They just tell you like, it's probably like, you know, an ohm maybe or something. Um, of course, you can also measure it when you get the capacitor itself, but it sounds like it's just not, it's not guaranteed. Which is interesting. All right, but for general purpose, this is good enough for me. I'm, you know, I'm using this with a 7805. The 7805 is like not very picky about you know, the capacitance. And then I add some ceramics as well. Um, so I ended up purchasing this one. And I think it's gonna be just fine. I like uh, Nichicon as a supplier. I've never had any issues with them. I'll say that there's a lot of suppliers. I think they're all gonna be equally as good, but I've just had very good luck with Nichicon um, the entire time I've uh, made electronics, and so I kind of tend to use uh, those or Panasonics. Again, you know, electrolytic capacitors are very jelly bean. Doesn't really matter, but if you had, if I have two, and one of them is Panasonic or Nichicon, and one is some other brand I haven't heard of, those are the two I'm gonna go for. So those are my electrolytic capacitor tips in the great search. Great search for this week.